All right. Hey, everybody. Adam here, The Roof Strategist. Today, I am joined by Garrett Kurt, founder of One Click Code. And Garrett and I have known each other for about five years now. I've done some work with Garrett and his company, companies, plural. And Garrett's working on a really, really powerful tool that he's going to show you today. And the reason I'm bringing him on is for two reasons. One, the tool is free. And two, this is going to help you make some more sales. And before we, we jump in and have Garrett introduce himself and, and how this all came to be, I want to talk about why I'm bringing this on. A lot of people on the channel are dropping comments about how do I differentiate myself in sales? How do I stand out from the competitors? And this tool that we're about to show you will not only help you differentiate yourself when you're selling jobs and earning business, especially when you get into that bidding war or someone's in between choosing you and someone else, they want to know who's in, whose hands, the, the homeowner wants to know whose hands they're in that's going to really help them and, and do the project right. So this tool will not only do that, but most importantly, once you land the job, there's no more powerful tool out there to help you get your supplements paid for and get top dollar for roof. So it's an absolute win-win. So without further ado, Garrett, welcome. And why don't you share a little bit with, uh, with our people, kind of who you are, what, what brought this to be and what they can expect. Thanks, Adam. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. It's you know, you and I go way back and, uh, you know, we've come a long way. Yeah. Um, I've, it's been, it's been a, it's been a long ride for me for 10 years, but it's been, it's been beneficial. A lot of growth, uh, a lot of experiences that I wouldn't trade for a bit. And, uh, being in this industry is, you know, it's, it's, it can be a whirlwind and it can be a challenge, but it can also be a huge reward. And so, you know, out of that reward, you know, I've, I've found a lot of wins, but the biggest win that I found was trying to answer a question question that I went through and that I was brought to me over and over again for 10 years of working within the insurance restoration industry. And that was an adjuster asking, is this code? Is this We've all heard that one. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. You, you, can you relate to that? Oh yeah, absolutely. And especially I'm pulling off, I've got my other monitor pulled up with just a sample of what we're going to show people. But on the report, when people ask what's code, the biggest thing that we fought was ice and water shield is saying, Hey, it's not code or Ridge cap or Valley liner. Um, things like that, that really made a big difference to how much we got paid. Cause the difference, especially as a salesperson from a job that was supplemented for appropriately and the price per square was where it needed to be. I mean, that could be a hundred, excuse me, 500 to a couple thousand dollars of commission to a salesperson. So it was a huge deal. And especially to the company. Yeah, it, it, it's actually, it it's, depends on the size of the roof. So the, the n amount of profitability or the amount of cost associated with doing the roof right for code exponentially grows as the size of the job gets bigger. And Absolutely. so does the upside as well. So tell us what, and, and Garrett, as you do this, why don't you share your screen? Tell us okay. what one click code is and what it does for people. And, and then we can see a quick demo of, of how it works. Absolutely. So here we go. Can you see my screen? Yes, we are looking good. So this is our website. Um, this is where you would be able to go from your desktop, your mobile phone. This is actually also a web app. Not only that, but we also have the ability for any user anywhere in the country to be able to download it on the iOS or Apple awesome. uh, App Store. Uh, we also have, have, have branched out and allowed Android users. We found that there was about a 50-50 split of roofing contractors that are using Android. So we actually added Android to our platform to allow uh, and pretty much any user that has access to the internet get a hold of our data. Awesome. So this is one click code, the, the, the number one spelled out, O-N-E click code.com for everyone that's watching. And then we'll put a link uh, in the description as well. And then Garrett, if they're in the app store, are, do they just click one click, excuse me, do they search one click code? Will it show up that way? Yeah, you would type out the one N E click code in both Android and Apple. Uh, it should pop up. Awesome. Uh, I'd like to say we do have five stars. So if anyone's <laughs> watching, it doesn't work out. Don't, don't give us a bad one. We're trying to get a five star, but if you love it, go ahead and <laughs> give a review. Give a good so, review. Yeah. Garrett, real quick, before you show us how this works and we can run a sample report, give us a quick snapshot of what one click code does. And then let's, let's do one of the searches and we can kind of see how it works. Sure. So I want to preference this is that this problem of building code is everywhere across the country. However, one of the other key things that we do solve is municipality jurisdictional authority. So the question is, is that an address will come across and it will say a city. Um, but does that city actually the one that actually issues the permits? Um, our secret sauce is that we were able to figure that out, that question across the entire United States. 
which allows us to be able to use an address to be able to then give you the building codes associated with the address. Therefore, address specific building codes. So if I'm hearing you right, and I did in, in full transparency to everyone here, I've, I have been a part, of, a part of this a little bit in the background, but not for a long time. And this is really cool seeing, um, getting fresh eyes on this, on this project and seeing how far it's come. But as you can see, before we jump in on, on the screen here, where it says IRC and IBC and IECC. So with that ad address, it's going to auto populate the building codes that are enforced based on the actual municipality. So the exact address. So from a sales standpoint, you can show up at someone's door, put this in a, in a direct mail piece or further in the presentation say, listen, this is one thing that differentiates us. You know, the insurance might have only done X, Y, and Z on the scope or the settlement, but they're missing all these key pieces. And yeah, a lot of contractors are going to tell you they can, they can go to bat and fight for you, but I have a uh, physical proof in a report already ready to go to the adjuster that's going to show what needs to be done so there's no battle. And most importantly, Mr. and Mrs. Homeowner, you're rest assured that you know the contractor that you choose is actually going to, going to install the roof to code because what will happen otherwise without this is that roofer is going to want a quick turn and burn that project, right? Garrett, they're just going to want to get the install done so they can get paid. But if they skip the ice and water shield, if they keep, if they skip the value line, if they skip anything, that's on the homeowner now that their, 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 their roof is not installed to code. So from a sales standpoint, this is just such a strong differentiator to come in and say, you know, you had a loss, my job's to bring it up to code. Yes, it can be a battle because it costs the insurance company money, but I'm going to make it easy and I'm going to take care of it for you. Does that, am I, am I on track, Garrett? You're absolutely right. So differentiating, um, we've had, we have customers, so we're not agnostic to say the insurance industry by itself. We have, we have retail salespeople that are utilizing us in the Northeast right now. And what they're using it for is to be able to show the homeowner, listen, here are the building codes and justifying their price and saying, I might be a thousand dollars more, but I'm following the building codes and the competitor. We're not going to talk poorly about them ever. Right. Mm -hmm. But however, they may not be following building codes. And according to the estimate, it doesn't look like they are. And yeah. that's why our price is there. So they're using it for justification on retail as well as on the insurance side is, you know, we already looked at it as a third party verifier of building codes. So we're contacting the cities and counties. We're doing it multiple times per year. We're also speaking with the officials that actually have the authority to speak upon the behalf of that city or county. And when they do so, we ask the questions that are most relevant and most, most asked really when it comes to supplementing. And that's, mm -hmm. you know, your manufacturer specs, are they required? Is, it, is the building codes enforced? Um, yeah. Your drip edge, your valley liner, ice and water shield. We just recently added underlayment. We were getting people from the Alabama, Mississippi area, and they were saying that there was people that were saying that you didn't really have to, and people, I mean, insurance companies or you know maybe um, other contractors were saying that you didn't have to put on uh, underlayment. And so they weren't including <laughs> underlayment in their estimate, which I thought was just absolutely, you know, far-fetched to think that was possible, but that's what was happening. Yeah, that's wild. And the cool thing, which we'll get into, uh, we're about to, I think we'll, we'll jump in and do a, do a quick search and show it works. But you can see in the preview that you get the municipality, the governing municipality that's listed and their websites, so you know, who to reach out to the building inspector, whoever issues the permits and the phone number. So Garrett, why don't we, why don't we, uh, pop something in. And while Garrett runs a search, I just want to do a quick disclaimer. Despite knowing Garrett, despite uh, being involved a little bit in this project way, way back when, uh, more from the idea uh, and inception standpoint, but Garrett has brought it a long way. I am not uh, tied into this by any means. There's no financial incentive for me to show this to my audience and to you guys. I just think this is an, an incredible tool. So um, it's free and you can see Garrett just clicked on the search button. He's typing in the address and, and Garrett, I'll hand it back to you. I just want people to know you know, I, I have nothing to gain by bringing this up other than, than helping, helping you guys, the salespeople and, and new owners, um, really make the most sales and profit the most from the sales. So without further ado, let's jump in and see what one of these things looks like. Yeah, if and anything, you I had quit, a bad to get on the show because I'm like, I need, I need, I'm looking for this to be viral. I need you to show, <laughs> me, show me your audience. So show he was kind audience. enough to let me on and I really appreciate it. And I hope all y'all that are watching this get the uh, most out of this and be able to utilize this for your own business. So awesome. Um, so I own a, a little preference. We're in Colorado. So we, not all states, I think I started maybe saying this at the beginning, not all states get into this jurisdictional issue because there's state codes. So like California and Minnesota, there's state codes. So it's not a big, a big of a deal. But in Colorado, Texas, Missouri, uh, Illinois, well, maybe not Illinois as much, but there's other states that have um, 
the municipalities adopt different building codes and they have yes or no answers to ice and water shield and drip edge depending on each city or each county could be different so that's where we come in most handy but we also do it on the state level too um, so in Colorado though um, this is where our our software comes in really handy is that the address that pops up sometimes goes into multiple zip codes so this address that we're putting right here 10694 East Powers is a is a address that we always use because it actually flows into four different cities or five different cities, sorry. Oh, and, it's, and it's in one zip code. So the zip code 80111 goes into four cities. So Google, so if you want to Google this, Google's not even smart enough to figure it out. We were able to figure it out so it doesn't matter which one you pick on, whether it's Greenwood Village, it's in Centennial or Aurora, because technically it's correct in terms of the zip code goes through there. But what does it actually go to and who controls that municipality? That's a good question. So right now it's giving me cities. So when I click on it, you know, what are the chances that it gives me a city? Well, technically it's not in a city. It's an unincorporated Arapahoe County. So in working within the industry, if you have sales reps going out and they're going in different counties and different cities, you don't know which codes apply to what. And so our first stop, typing an address, tells you the biggest question. And this is the key question that has to be answered, otherwise everything afterwards is incorrect. And that is, where would I pull a permit? And in this instance, it's not the city, it's not Greenwood Village, it's Arapahoe County. It's actually tucked, if you look at the map, it's right like two blocks away from the, uh, from the border of Greenwood Village, and it's about a quarter mile away from Centennial. Um, our app knows it, our software knows it, it tells you and gives you the right direction. So at a minimum, even if you are looking at it from, you know, I don't need to know the building codes because it's a state code thing, we tell you who is the control of municipalities so that you don't have to think about it. That's wild, that's wild. Let's, uh, that, that's way cool. Let, let's talk about the, the IRC and IBC code and scroll down a little bit. Yeah, so, uh, going, so we do have the website here, so if I wanted to click on it, take me right there. Uh, to the uh, the city, or actually the county in this instance. If I wanted to call it, I was on my mobile app, I'd be able to call the, the county right now and ask them questions if I wanted to. So we make it one click, right? Um, the, the next thing that we haven't really hit on yet is the sales tax. So we have, we have a lot of people using Aculinks, with people using um, Simbility or ExactMate, but it doesn't provide you with address-specific sales tax. So we were able to partner with a, a large company that actually provides us um, with the address specific sales tax. So it's That's not by brilliant. zip code, it's address specific. Brilliant, brilliant. So now the way that that can be used is to supplement for the sales tax because Xactimate's never right. And a few percent on every job adds up to a lot of money at the end of the year. No, it does. Um, so it's, it's a user error and I, it's not necessarily intentional, but people want to be able to get the highest percentage, get the most, and other people maybe want to get the lowest. So it's, it's, it's how do you get that transparency and ask that question of what is actually there? And yeah. so again, third party verifier of that. So we provide the uh, address specific sales tax and it adds up. I mean, if you're doing 400 claims and you're off by a percent and that's, you know, let's say it's, that's what four mil 400 claims is $4 million in rev. Um, <laughs> you know, that's, there's, there's a lot of money and material there that could be utilized or lost. So yeah. we want to make sure that's correct. And that was one of the things that, you know, I didn't think of it at first, but it's, it's, it's actually a big deal. Um, the next thing is a third party, you know, third party verifier. We're checking the code enforcement, whereas, you know, the manufacturer specs, that's important. And getting to the guts, which is the 2015 IRC and IBC. Now, for people that haven't got a chance to actually uh, look through all the books or know how this all works, there's, a, let's say there's seven different IRC books and they come out every couple of years. And cities and counties adopt them on different levels. So there's, there's city of Inglewood could be on 2015, Arapahoe County is on 2009. Different codes, different requirements. Again, we know the answers to that so you don't have to go look through the book to figure it out. We make it as simple as a yes and no. Um, not only is it simple for you, it's simple for the homeowner to see, it's simple for the adjuster to see, it's simple for anyone that really wants to know instantly what those building codes are and what should you do in the instance that you're replacing that roof. Awesome, awesome. So, so what's the yeah, go on to the building code pieces. Yeah, so we, we get a little bit further. So we get the IECC, that's the International Energy Code Council. So we are looking at the R values. So those of you that want to do commercial roofs, that are getting to the flat roofs, it's R value always comes up. And so we were able to go across the country and find out what those R values are for both residential and commercial. That also is not only roof and attic, but it also gives you sidewalls. So if people are doing siding, you can also use us to be able to identify the, the wood frame 
uh, for a residential house, what the R value is supposed to be in that particular area. Oh, wow. uh, we're able to figure that out, which is pretty good. So we have some uh, contractors or siding contractors that don't use it, although it says roofing. They're using it for siding. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting to hear what people are using our app with and for. Um, it's, it's, it's actually pretty exciting because it just shows us where we can expand, um, you know, into a different, uh, different types of codes, you know, siding, gutters, windows, which is on our roadmap as well. And how does that, how does that work? So one, one really cool thing, it says code enforcement at the top. Yes. Install per manufacturing specifications. Yes. But then under the IRC and IBC code, I see that ice and water shield on eaves is a no on both. But yes. if you were installing, let's say a GAF shingle and that shingle says um, you should put ice and water on the eaves. Now, all of a sudden the building code, excuse me, the shingle manufacturer specs trumps the building code. Is that right, Garrett? That would be correct. So and, that's uh, a, a really back end and a great way to um, fight for your supplements by saying, hey, this town says enforcement. Yes, code's enforced. And it says per manufacturer specifications. We pulled off a GAF shingle or certainty or Owens Corning or whatever it is. And they state that ice and water should be on the eaves. Therefore, it must be paid for. And boom. Mic yeah. drop, you're out. <laughs> Mic drop, you're out. So, you know, that's an interesting twist to things. And that is something that we are going to be releasing in the next, uh, in the next three to four weeks. Uh, we're going to be adding on a little bit of something that has to do with manufacturer specs. I think we could probably come to a different uh, time and do another uh, video on that when we launch that feature. But it's yeah, sure. something that's just super exciting. I wasn't planning on telling you guys about it, but I guess it's a, it, it, was, it makes sense to say, hey, this is what we're on to and this is what we're up to. Um, yeah, that, I out of the bag and I didn't even have any idea. <laughs> yeah, I know. I didn't tell you. <laughs> so, um, but yes, there's other ways that we are thinking of outside the box to help your, your consumer, your customers lives that much easier to add value and to be really be able to, you know, differentiate themselves in the marketplace with the customers and even the adjusters. Yeah. The adjusters love to be able to, I, mean, I shouldn't say love, but I think anyone, you know, that has um, the, the mindset of looking for the best in others, um, is it wants to be able to say, you know what? I trust that, that trust that guy. The guy came out, he gave me the code information. He wasn't trying to pull my leg, you know, and I, next time I see him, I'm going to trust him. You know, it's about building the trust and building rapport. And that's what we're all about is trying to get that transparency, this data to be able to give that trust and rapport back to the community, back to the industry. It, it levels the playing field, you know, and it, it totally does. And the other cool thing, which, which is funny, Garrett, when we, when we, when I first saw this and where it was going, um, the, the opportunities from a sales standpoint are tremendous. So if you, sc can you scroll up for just two seconds, one thing that I'm a huge fan of is, and everyone who knows who watches this channel is direct mail is how to make sales without knocking doors. I've got my under the radar sales letter. That's part of the roofing sales accelerator marketing pack, uh, which I've talked about. There's a link in the description. That's my proven marketing material. You guys are, many of you are using and you can start using instantly. Um, but one of the cool things you can do when we talk about the different stages of the claims process, if you're working in a neighborhood that you know everyone's got a check in hand, right? Like ground zero, all that stuff gets gobbled up, baseball size hail hits. You can, let's say you're driving around and you see the homes that haven't been done yet. When you write down that address and send the direct mail, you can even include a report and say, hey, I printed this out. I saw this. I want to make sure, I want to bring this to your attention that as you get this stuff done, that the insurance company has assessed your claim properly and has provided appropriate compensation for you to replace your roof to code, which chances are have been updated in the last handful of years. Cause it does, you know, 10, 15 years ago, um, my home personally doesn't have ice and water on it because it code wasn't required. But when it hails, I need to put it on because the code changed. And if you sent that out there and say, hey, I can help make sure this gets paid for. I mean, what an amazing tool. And the other thing, if you look on the far left, it says powered by Zillow. So that's the Zillow info. We have the date built in the years. You know, right out of the gate, like you might have some indications on what type of sidings on there, what type of, if there's old windows for an upsell, if there's a chance for aluminum siding, which is more prone to damage. So from a, from a sales standpoint, this is such, such a valuable tool. And chances are no other contractor has showed up and showed the homeowner this report. And, and yes, some people might say, Adam, don't, don't send it in the mail because you're giving it away. But I would, I would challenge you on that because once you give someone a little value, they're going to be curious on what else you can have to offer. So um, really fantastic tool on the front end, but most importantly is maximizing that profit on the back end. 
Um, so sorry to cut you off, Garrett. I just got real excited about that. No, that's, that's, that's good. I mean, I'm, I'm glad. I'm, I, I'm trying to inspire others to get excited about what I've been passionate about trying to solve the question, right? So, yeah. you know, as we did that, we were living in Colorado too. We have a little bit of elevation. So this is not, you know, going to be something that's relevant to everybody. But in Colorado Springs, um, ice and water shields required at 7,000 feet. That's a nuance that we know about. Um, there's also stuff in Boulder County, so Colorado again, but there's other, other states that require stuff with elevation. So when this elevation down here goes to 7,000 feet, the ice and water shield will automatically turn to a yes, and then it will quote the elevation height right underneath it. So <laughs> that would, yeah, so it, it takes that question out, right? So you don't have to go look for it, just saving time. That's what all we're trying to do, save time and uh, allow you know the people to get back to what they do best, which is, you know, putting roofs on or adjusting roofs or whatever it may be, just to get back to what they, they should do and do best. Yeah. Um, so then we get into like climate zone. That's not going to be important for everybody, but um, climate zone is for some engineers. So we have some customers that are engineers. Okay. So they, they wanted to know climate zone. They want to know a couple other data points we're working on for them, but climate zone was one of them. And uh, we have a couple of uh, companies that are doing a lot of um, hail related damages repairs and so that they're they're actually using this moderate hail zone as a, as a reason to be able to say to a particular person homeowner insurance company whoever it may be saying you know what you live in a moderate it, it hailed here but it's classified within the ICC International Code Council as a moderate to high risk of hail it's in your best interest and it might be required depending on where you go right be required to be actually put an impact resistant roof on in it, fact some cities such as Fort Collins actually did that that is brilliant. So I, I had no idea that this was here. I just saw it on this report. By the way, Garrett and I talked like two weeks ago. I was poking around on here and he says, dude, I got a really exciting update for you. And that's why we waited to do this. But with that, with that, that hail impact zone, when you are able to sit down with a homeowner and present this material and it's third party verified, they know you're not there to just sell them something. You're showing them facts. And if you can say, this is a moderate zone, it's probably not your first hail claim, especially us. Garrett's in Colorado too. He's about an hour from me. I've been in Garrett's office. The whole area up and down Colorado, if you're from here, it just gets obliterated. Same with Texas. And if you can sit there and say, hey, not only should you have this because it'll reduce the chance of a claim, but you can likely get a reduction in your premium from your insurance. And this is like on paper qualified as a moderate hail zone that is the reason that you should come out of pocket the extra X dollars per square to upgrade to an impact resistant shingle. And boom, again, extracting more profit from a job, higher commission, everybody wins and the homeowner's protected and saving money. It's a slam dunk deal. Yeah. And in fact, I mean, these, you know, putting impact resistant roofs on will actually help prevent, you know, uh, damage in the future, which, yeah. you know, I mean, the severity is getting pretty bad out there, but at the same time, you know, there seems to be enough work for everybody. Yeah. So even though they're putting these roofs on, so, yeah. um, it, you know, going to the left, we have the Zillow side. I'm going to explain to you why we have it there. And then also the drone. So we feel that, you know, the drones are becoming more popular within the inspection process. And so we thought about it, you know, when people are typing an address, it makes sense for them not only to know the building codes, but to know the drone codes so that they can fly their drone. So we actually pull this data from the FAA. So that is data that comes directly from them. Got everything, man. You know, it's nothing, it's nothing like, you know, like, oh my gosh, we came up with a new thing. It's just we took existing ways of accessing data and we aggregated it together in one view. Um, so we've actually had some people call, call us and say, we're so excited about having the drone. Like, they literally just like using our app to be able to say they can fly their drone on a house. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. That's, I thought that was really cool to hear. And um, going into the Zillow, you know, Zillow, for the most part, doesn't have anything about building codes. So it has to do with property. And we thought that we would add that as a value add. It's, it's just, it's data that you can go get, but the link is there so that you can go and click on it if you wanted to, because you can go and click on it really quickly and actually pull up the data associated with it, be able to see inside pictures. You'd be able to go, you'd be able to scroll down to be able to see the, uh, the link to the county if you wanted to, right? So yeah. In Rappo County, you can actually go there and click on the link. I think it's at the bottom here. Uh, county website. Here we go. So I can technically go if I wanted to go there. I could actually go no, back to safety. <laughs> of course, it doesn't there. want to play nice now. <laughs> I could actually go there and see who actually owns that property and get information if I wanted to. I just did a video on that. We just released yeah. one on how to use it. So if you if you guys didn't watch it, Garrett, that's I'm so glad you brought this up because great minds so, think for whatever reason that not all the links work. And maybe I should have checked that before I showed you. But the point yeah, is, it's, it's, is Zillow, it's not yours. It. See if that works. 
Yeah. So what Garrett's pulling up, I did that video on using that county website specifically for the direct mail because it's going to show who who owns the property in their name. Um, yeah. So for your sales and marketing, it's a great outreach. Plus, when you do click on that on Zillow and you get the exterior view, it it's another scouting tool. You know, if you're driving through an area pulling addresses, you'll see in the neighborhood, you know, what type of siding, what type of materials are there. It might be more prone to damage. Um, Here's a little them. trick, and I'll show, I'm going to hear. I'm gonna, not everyone gives us the floors, but this is why I put the floors in there. So you can walk up, and you can know that this. You can, if you zoom in here, you can maybe see in this picture that it's a one and a half story, so it's a split level. So the interesting thing is, if you take this 2,900, which is the square feet of the home size, mm -hmm. and you divide it by 1.5, equals 19.33 squares. That's not going to be completely on, uh, accurate, but the idea is, is that it's roughly around 21 square, 2100 square feet is the roof size of that building. Oh, wow. and, uh, and so it gives you kind of a good idea of how big that roof is based on the square footage divided by the floors. It's not going to be hundred percent right, but you know, it gives you, it gives you a quick ballpark. Yeah. So, and it'll help you get high charges on your supplements by showing the floors, you know? Yeah. That's another great point. So just showing yeah. that there is a two story associated with this thing. So, yeah. And then on the adjusters that say, Oh, well, uh, you can access it from the first, if it's a walk up to a second, but you might be able to at least try to get the slope that's, that's down the high side in case guys need to tie off or something. Um, there, there's always ways to, to adjust. Yep. So now this is great on a web. This is also on a mobile device that we talked about, but the kicker is, is that we can actually create this as a PDF. And this PDF can be shown, be created, it takes about five seconds to create, and then it can be actually emailed along with your supplement. So imagine this as being sent out as like a cover sheet. So it's not you as the contractor that's going and saying, these are codes and this is what you have to do. It's somebody else. Mm -hmm. um, you know, everyone relies on third parties and and, and, neither, and so should you. I mean, if you think about it, you can hand measure your roof or you use Geomni or Eagle View or yeah. Hover. You're using other people's technology to validate your position. And that's very typical in most industries. So here's your PDF. So this actually gets generated. I didn't show it as fast as it showed up, but you can actually download this. You can make it into, you can print it out if you'd like to, to show somebody. You can actually uh, include it in an email. Um, this is where the download is. So I can just literally download it and then open it up. Oh, way cool. Way cool. Gary, this is awesome, man. I mean, yeah. this, this has come such a far way. And I, I remember when this was a, an idea in infancy and how daunting it was to think about pulling in the data from the county for the tax thing. And then like the IRC and IBC and then, and then Zillow and drone and the, like all these different chan it, it there's nothing else like it. And, and the fact that it's free, is, is wild. So guys, if you haven't done it already, there's a few things that I'm going to tell you to do. One, um, click like on this video, drop any comments you have. Um, I'll see if, if Garrett will take a look and, and respond to any of those as well. Um, subscribe to this channel. There's more good stuff coming and check out the roofing sales accelerator marketing pack. I talked about this would be a great tool to supplement that and all my sales and marketing materials. So that's in the, in the link, uh, below as well. Now, before we wrap it up, Garrett, is there anything else that you wanted to share that we might've overlooked or rushed through that would be beneficial for these sales guys and, and roofing sales company owners to, to know how to use one click code, whether it's going to oneclickcode.com or downloading the app in the app store again available on both android and um iphone um anything yeah, I, got one, I got one thing to bring in it's just really the takeaway is this so yeah, as do a rep going out you can use this app you can use it for drone you can use it for being able to differentiate yourself uh, you can also use it from a production standpoint so you have your inside production people and maybe it's yourself doing the production idea is that you would be able to go out and reference this report and be able to identify what is building codes so that you can actually build those material orders mm -hmm. and you get shortcuts where do you pull the permit um and you can if you don't need to pull a permit you're going to find out because you're gonna be able to call them and say and they're going to tell you no permit but at least it's <laughs> you being able to figure out where to go and who to call and then in the finally, when you do send that final invoice or you're sending that supplemental request to the insurance company, whoever it may be, you can then use this report again. So this could be touched three different times and used three different times within the sales cycle. That's, a, that's brilliant. And it doesn't cost anyone anything. Yeah. So I, I absolutely love it, Garrett. Um, hey, everybody, if anyone wants to use this, go to oneclickcode.com. We'll put a link in the description. Check out the app store and uh, plug in your address, tinker around. And I'd love to see what you guys think uh, of these free tools. I'm going to hopefully bring on some more uh, great people. And then Garrett, when we do an update, you want to jump on again and we'll, we'll, uh, yeah. we'll do it. So awesome. Yeah. Hey, thank you everybody. We'll see you guys on the next one.